Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about RAM. Random access memory, what it is, what it does, what it means. Whether you're a computer technician or just an individual and you're learning more about RAM, how to upgrade the types of RAM you should go with, or really what the differences are, we're going to walk through a couple of those things today. So first of all, what is RAM? Well, RAM is, allows you to have stored data to be accessed in any random order and allows you to be working on multiple things at once. So if you think about a computer, a computer that does not have RAM would kind of be like an old cassette tape. How the old cassette tape, you can't skip from the first song to the fifth song back to the second song. That's really what our computers would be like if we didn't have RAM, we would have to go through certain processes in sequential order. We wouldn't be able to randomly access information on our system. But then RAM also dictates how much random access we can have. And that's really going to be the size like the module, you know, how much you can actually work on at any given time. Well, how does RAM work? Well, RAM allows you to have more data to be processed simultaneously. It keeps your system running fast and it helps speed your system up. One way that I kind of articulated to a lot of my customers is thinking about your computer like a train. So your computer is like a train. That train has an engine. That engine would be just like your CPU, your processor. Well, that engine runs on coal. And if you had a guy shoveling coal into your engine, that's kind of like having RAM. Your RAM shovels coal into the engine and it keeps it running fast. The more RAM you have, the more guys shoveling coal, the faster your system is essentially going to run. So if you had multiple processes and you start accessing and storing more data on your computer, it would be like adding carts to that train. Over a certain period of time, your guys shoveling coal can only manage to shovel so much. So in order to keep your system running smoothly, in order to keep your system running efficiently, you would have to add guys shoveling coal. That would be like upgrading your RAM. Putting more RAM into the computer would be more guys shoveling coal. So that's one way to kind of look at RAM and one way I articulate it when we're talking about how RAM affects the speed of a system. When we talk about how RAM really affects the processes of the system or that, or that random access of information, we would think about a desk at work. When you go to work, you might have a completely fresh, clean desk. When you sit down to start working on things, you go over to your filing cabinet and you grab a file out, you come and sit back down at your desk and you put that file on your desk. If you're working on something else throughout the day, you might go back over to your filing cabinet, you might pick out another folder, come back and set it down, and so on and so forth. So throughout the day, you might be working on multiple files, multiple projects, you're working on them all at once. So RAM is kind of like a desk. The more RAM you have would be like having a larger desk space. If you had smaller amount of RAM, it would be like having smaller desk space. Essentially, you would have to put a file away before you could get another file out if you didn't have as much RAM. The more RAM you, you added, it would be like adding space to your desk. You could work on more things at once. You could process things faster. You wouldn't always have to be closing them, putting them away. It's the same kind of a concept when you're working on multiple applications. So if you had multiple applications, you can be running more at one given time. With more RAM, the less RAM you have, the less things you can work on at once. Otherwise, your, your system is actually going to get bogged down with the processes. Now, all RAM actually has its own speed. So there's a certain rate at which the bus speed comes off the RAM module. Now, what that affects is how fast your RAM processes the information. So the higher the speeds or the faster the throughput, the faster that information is accessed, the faster that information is processed by your processor. So when we want to talk about you know math of these RAM speeds, we could think about how it all really started off back in the day. Modern CPUs use eight bytes per bit, gives you about 64 bits. So on uh, with SD RAM, SD RAM was really your first generation of random access memory that was used in a computer. And the math on that was a one to one. So if you had a hundred megahertz memory module, 
you could multiply that times the eight bytes, which would give you a total of an 800 megahertz total speed for that RAM. Well, as the generations went on and they created the, the next generation of RAM, essentially that front bus speed doubled. So you had now double the front side bus speed. So then you would essentially have 200 megahertz. Well, you still only have your eight bytes per bit with your more modern processors. Therefore, you would have 200 megahertz times eight bytes is gonna give you 1600 megahertz speed. And this trend continued. You had SDRAM was really your first generation of the more modern, robust, random access memory. DDR was really your second generation, and essentially that had doubled the front side bus speed. Well, as you could probably imagine, when DDR2 came out, that front side bus speed doubled again. So instead of it being perhaps 200 megahertz, now it's 400 megahertz. So when we're thinking about it, and we're, we're talking about what the math on the RAM is, SDRAM was a one-to-one. -one. DDR had doubled, so it used a multiplier of two. When generation three came out, DDR2, now it uses a multiplier of four because it doubled again. And well, again, with DDR3, that doubled again. So DDR3 uses a multiplier of eight. So I know this starts to get a little confusing, but we want to talk a little bit about it so you do understand. So when we're talking about the math on the front side bus, we're talking about how modules are, are named, the speeds they use, and the type of speeds that you're going to use for the generations moving forward with your computers, or the type of memory module that you want to put in your computer, and what the numbers mean. Well, the front side bus, if we're, if we're naming a module, it's going to be the front side bus times the bytes. So modules are essentially named PC. Now the PC is also synonymous with which generation of the memory module we're talking about. So PC, if it were just PC XXX, it would be referring to DDR, the original, double data rate. If you had PC2 in your system, it would be referring to DDR2, which was the second generation of that module. If we had PC3, we'd be talking about double data rate third generation. And these modules are all given that name PC8500. You probably see it. And the reason that they're given that 8500 is because if we took your double data rate DDR3 times that front side bus speed of your RAM module, which might be 1067 megahertz and if you took that 1067 megahertz against the multiplier of 8 which is what the multiplier for DDR3 is it would essentially give you 8500 and some some change and so they call that module PC3 8500 so it's just important to understand a couple of those concepts now your your motherboard and your CPU are really going to dictate the compatibility of RAM speeds that are available and what can be used on your system. And luckily, they create memory banks that have a notch or a key that we call it in the actual memory bank. So it's really hard to install the wrong kind of RAM on your computer. If that notch is in a different place, that means it's meant for a different type of, of motherboard, different type of a processor. Um, you would want to, however, look up the manufacturing specs for upgrading. Some systems can only handle so much RAM. They might max out at 8 gigs. They might max out at 16 gigs. Uh, there are computers out there that go all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you understand random access memory just a little bit more. I hope you understand the different speeds and how those multipliers are used to name the memory modules. So when you're going out there and you're just talking about, oh, PC8500, you'll know that that's 1067 megahertz because you'll know now the math, you'll know how to use the multipliers, and that way you'll be able to figure it out in case your customer says, oh, I don't know, I, I need 1067 megahertz, DDR3. Well. 
if you go into your inventory, now you know how to pull out PC38500. So just some useful tips. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you share this video. Please let me know if there's any other tutorial videos I can make for you. Like it, share it. We'll talk to you guys next time.